What an honor and what a joy to be here in the house of God this morning. And I am thankful that I am standing in a church that knows the freedom to worship. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. And all the time. I said that in Alabama not too long. I said, God is good. And they said, all the time. And I said, all the time. They said, God is good and that's all right. Every single one of them. We got some Idaho cowboys out here, though. I've seen the cowboy boots. It's an honor for us to be here this morning. We actually come from Nashville, Tennessee. Anybody ever been to Nashville? Yeah, a couple. Um, It's a wonderful city. It's got, you know, uh, no music in it at all. But... It's just an honor to be able to stand and share about Jesus today. This on Resurrection Day. I I love that we celebrate resurrection. We pick out a day. But guess what? I think that we ought to be celebrating that every day of our life. That Jesus Christ died on a cross for all of our sins and everything we've done wrong in our lives. That's something to celebrate every day of our life. There is resurrection power in this place. I believe it. And he's done that for me, and he's done that for Dusty, and we're going to share a little bit of our testimony. And I believe he's going to do that for somebody this morning that feels broken. There's brokenness in here. But I love also that I have heard stories of the ones that got baptized this morning, of the brokenness of their life, but they are renewed today because of the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. This man that's behind me, Dusty Wells, he's been in gospel music for 30, 33 years. Wow, and he looks 40, that's, so he hasn't been in it very long, right? No. He's the coolest granddad you'll ever meet in your life. He just had a brand new grandbaby girl um, just two weeks ago, I think it was, two weeks ago. But uh, he became my best friend along with his wife and his family. They kind of took me in, and they are now my second family besides my mom and my daddy. But, uh, and I spend a lot of time with this family. I love this man. He's one of the greatest encouragers that I've ever met in my life. And he has such a big heart for God. Would you welcome Dusty Wells this morning as he comes on up here? You want to play one? I'll play a bit or so I can get to it. Let's just lead into it. Thank you. Good morning. Y'all look so pretty. Nice and dressed up. Lots of glitter. And I love, though, that we can come to a place and we don't have to look pretty. We don't have to look all dressed up, even though that I think that's fun and that's important. But we can come to this place, these tired, broken, empty vessels. And we can come on Easter Sunday. We can come Wednesday night. We can come Thursday night. We can come Monday morning. We can come before this place. This place. I love it when Anthony pulls out a Dottie Rambo song because I got to travel and minister with Dottie for many, many, many years. And everybody always thinks that Dottie wrote that song, Holy Spirit, they're welcome in this beautiful church. But she wrote it when she was behind the Iron Curtain and they told her that she could not share Jesus or his love or his blood or the sacrifice. And she said, Holy Spirit, you may not be welcome any other place but you're welcome right here in this heart, in this place. Isn't he good to us? I look out at each one of you, and I know you all have a story. You all have something in your life probably today that you may be struggling with or dealing with. Well, I am here to tell you, my friends, if he can love me back to life, if he can restore me, he can do it certainly for you. You know, I am from Twin Falls, Idaho. (laughs) Salute, as they used to say on that old show, hee-haw. I was born in Gooding, Idaho. And it was 42 years ago on a Saturday afternoon that I was sitting at home in Twin Falls, Idaho in the Washington Park Apartments. So little housing development for widows and divorcees and people on welfare. And 
bunch of just misfits and vagabonds in life who didn't really have a whole lot. I was this 14-year-old kid, and I had to steal my school clothes. I was abused in every way imaginable. I was taken to a prostitute at the age of 12 years old in Wells, Nevada, to make sure I was a real man by one of my stepfathers. My mom was married seven times. She was just a product of her own environment, the way she was raised. So she was doing the very best, and she didn't have how to raise us. Drugs around us, alcohol, pornography, that was a part of our daily life. But, oh, my friends, one Saturday afternoon, precious couple went out and did what we used to call was door knocking, inviting kids to Sunday school on their big church bus. And they happened to knock on the door at 17 Collingwood Circle, and I answered the door, and they said, hey, do you have any little brothers or sisters at home? I said, no, I'm just, it's just me. And they said, well, would you like to come to Sunday school? I didn't know what Sunday school, I know I hated school, <laughs> but I didn't know what Sunday school was. But you know what, Renee? They had something. The minute I saw them, it wasn't their outward appearance. It was nothing to do with that. It's in our eyes and it's in our tongue. We have the power of life and death, death in our tongue, I tell people all the time. They were starting to speak words of life to me even as they said, well, would you like to come to Sunday school? And they just started talking to me and, and just sharing and just saying, you know, we, we do this and we do that and Jesus is real and you can come and you can be a part of this. I had never heard anything about this Jesus. I was 14 years old. All I knew is I was just this lousy kid who was just didn't know my father. I didn't, all I knew is I was just this kid who struggled in all kinds of areas in life. But I knew these people had something. They had a story, just like each one of you. It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian all your life. You still have a story. So I started going to Sunday school. They'd come and pick me up on that bus. They'd take me to Sunday school. They started teaching me love. They started showing me love. They started showing me care and compassion and how much Jesus loved me. And it was that summer in McCall, Idaho in 1972. Woo! I'm telling you what. Dottie Rambo used to do her little Cherokee Indian yell. When she got excited, I'm about ready to do my little Cherokee Indian yell when I get excited. But I ran to an altar. And he forgave me for everything. And he set me on a path and a journey that has taken me across the world. I don't have a college education. I have nothing. But what he has given me is everything. Because I decided at that time, I knew there was something different that I wanted my life to be. Let me tell you, friends, if he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. You can walk under in this place today and you can be depressed and discouraged. You can, you can have your last dime. You can have an illness, a sickness. You can be depressed. But I'm telling you what, he is the need meeker, meter and he's the way maker and today can be your day to change your life. But it starts with you wanting to decide that. He's been so good and faithful. Anthony, I love that we get to go out and do this and share heart. and Your own story, you'll tell in a little bit. We just want others to know that, you know what, it's real and it's okay to struggle and it's okay to be broken. But there will come that definite time where you decide new is what I want. There's a scripture, and then I'm going to sing a song, which I don't do a lot, but... Anthony Fasello, whoever wants to follow him singing, he could sing the yellow pages. I used to hear a preacher, Dr. E.V. Hill, used to say, if you don't get that, then your wood is wet. And let me tell you, he can sing, anointed singing. I love, I love anointed singing. I told this to the group of students the other night. 
I, I had known Anthony for a couple of years um, prior to actually meeting him about 10 years ago. I knew he was a great singer. I knew he'd had all these accolades and awards and traveled with some of the top groups in the, the Southern Gospel inspirational market. But 10 years ago, we were at a star, but he called out of the blue, and or I think back then he may have MySpace. How many remember MySpace? <laughs> the power of social media. But he said, hey, I'd love to just sit down and have coffee. And I said, I'd love to, because I love coffee. Anybody that knows me knows I love coffee. And I love coffee, my wife, my kids, and my grandbabies. And Jesus is way above there, too, so just know that. But we sat down at a Starbucks in Nashville, Tennessee, and I saw this broken, broken person. And here he had all this talent and this success, but I saw him as a broken young man who thought that God had wandered away from him. And I remember he said to me, he said, I'm never going to sing a minister again. <laughs> oh, God is so funny and cute and clever. <laughs> and I just sat there, I said, oh, okay. You know, there's something about as we get older, Brother Rich, we understand God. I don't, I don't know if we ever understand God, Brother Norm, but we understand. He is pretty smart. He does know what he's doing with us. So we sat there and, and talked, and he, the more he said, you know, I'm just done. Christians, blah, 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 blah. And I just said, oh, okay, okay, that's fine. And I knew that I knew that I knew that his latter days would be greater than those former days. And they are. And they are. I've gotten to walk with him 10 years. He called me a couple of months later, maybe it was a year later, and I was getting ready for church on a Sunday morning. He said, Dusty, Dusty, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I said, oh, what? He said, I got up this morning. I was looking in the mirror, and God spoke to me. He spoke to me. I'm supposed to start a group and we're going to go out and minister to people. Here it is, seven, eight years later. They're one of the freshest, hottest groups, but even more important, they're one of the most anointed groups in gospel music today. They've had all kinds of awards. God hears your heart and he listens for obedience. Doesn't matter about music or whatever. Today, your story can go to a new place if you'll be willing to let it. Jeremiah 29 11 says, and I live by this scripture. I live by this scripture. I live by this in Psalms 139. If you don't believe in yourself, I challenge you every day. This, somebody did this to me when I was 16 years old. That's 40 years ago. I know I look about 18 or 19. They told me you read Psalms 139 every day. And let me tell you, I have done that. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God doesn't create junk. God doesn't create junk. He loves us and we're valuable. But Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And Renee and Pastor Lynn, I like to think that prosper, I, I sure would like to have a lot of money. But I don't think it's just money he's talking about. He's talking about friendships, relationships, family. He's talking about prospering us in all those different areas, not just financially, even though that's great, so that we can help build the kingdom of God more. But he has plans to prosper us, declares the Lord. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. How much? All. How much? All. all of our heart. He declares that. And I declare that over you today, that you will find that new today. McCall, Idaho played a special part of my life. Valley Church played a part of my life. I love the excellence that was demonstrated here. So I get a treat right now. There was a little Pentecostal pastor's wife that would sometimes wander into that church in that little McCall camp meeting, and she'd get up on that Hammond B3. 
And she'd have her little hair doing her little attitude. And it was a godly attitude. It was a security in Jesus attitude. Because she wanted to touch people's lives. And I love that Sister Ruby loved young people. I loved that Brother Rudson wanted to make a difference. Folks, I cannot tell you. If you don't have a home church, if you're just visiting here today, I challenge you to plug into this place and let this be a lighthouse for the Valley of Idaho. If it wasn't for what he did for us on Calvary, where in the world would we be? Just think about that. I love divine appointments, and I believe this morning is a divine appointment. So funny how God gives little dots in our lives, and all of a sudden he starts connecting them, and it all makes sense. So many things have come to life this morning for me as I was standing over there, um, and I'll explain some of them to you. One of them is, one of the first things I said, Sister Ruby, a a Thursday night, was I said, I believe God is raising up a new soldier. This morning you said, God is raising up a new warrior. One. Come on. Because this world is tough. And guess what? That means we got to fight. But with Jesus Christ, it's going to be all right. We've got an armor like none other. So you go out beyond these doors and you fight with everything in you and you make a difference in this world because it needs us so badly. Because it's falling apart, you all. Look around us. It may seem secure in here, but when we go out and we face our Mondays and our Tuesdays and our Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays, boy, the devil fights bad, doesn't he? Mm, He does. I was raised in church and I knew right from wrong from early on in my life. And I sat in a pew and I sat in a chair and I heard about the love of Jesus Christ. I heard about what he did. I played church, you know, a lot of us do that because it's what we know in our life because our parents drag us to church. <laughs> but I'm thankful for that because guess what? That's, it was ingrained in me when my life took a wrong turn and I fell apart. You see, I started in ministry in 1993 full-time. I've been doing full-time ministry for almost 22 years of my life. I just turned 40, April 3rd, Friday. Yeehaw! As Dusty says, I only look 19, don't I? (laughs) And a few change. (laughs) Would you say you better watch it back there? I've learned in my short 40 years, though, that life can throw a lot of things at you. And before we know it, we can be really, really lost. I grew bitter at the church because I saw a lot of things that really hurt me and disappointed me. People that I thought were something really weren't what they said they were. Does that make sense? And behind this facade that they had, they really did a lot of deceitful things. And they said a lot of deceitful things. And, and I said, if that's what Christianity is about, I don't want any part of it. And I ran from full-time ministry. I ran from God. I ran from everything good in my life. And before I found it, I found myself seeking out things that weren't good for me to fill the void that I had in my life. If you don't have Jesus, boy, there's a big old void. And I sought out and found one of the largest drug dealers. I went back home to Baltimore, Maryland. That's where I'm from. And became friends with the largest drug dealer in Baltimore, Maryland. And you can imagine where it went from there. As much drugs as I could ever snort up my nose, I got for free. As many ecstasy pills as I could take I got for free and so that's what my life became Monday night Tuesday night Wednesday night Thursday night Friday night Saturday night Sunday night every night of the week I was at a glass top table snorting something up my nose or popping a pill and really what it was about was I was trying to wash away all of the bitterness and the hurt that I felt in my life 
it didn't happen. Because any time I came off of a high, I would just weep. Because I knew that I was doing wrong. I think it was the power of God is what it was. He was knocking. Hey, 2.30 in the morning. One morning I was high as a kite and I decided to drive home to my dad's house. I've done that many times before. But for some reason, this time was different. And I got in my car. I don't even remember starting it. I don't remember getting in it. The only thing I remember is blue lights flashing behind me. Boy, that sobered me up real quick. I had enough sense to pull over and the officer came up to the window and he knocked on the window with this flashlight. And he said, sir, it's late. You're going a little fast. Why don't you just go home? And he walked away. Boy, that was God's mercy right there. I sat there for a little while because I couldn't believe, number one, that I got busted. <laughs> it always feels worse when you get busted, doesn't it? You know, have you ever gotten busted because you said a little lie? Boy, you feel guilty, don't you, after that? You don't feel so guilty when you say the lie, but boy, if you get busted, it sure feels bad, doesn't it? I had a little two-seater Nissan Pulsar. Do y'all remember those cars? Yeah, I saw our excuse for a sports car. Had little T-tops and flip-up lights. But I was in that little bitty car, and all of a sudden, a big, big God showed up. And that big God was doing a big work on little me. As I started to drive down the road to my daddy's house, I could feel the presence of God just welling up in that car, and I could feel Him starting to change me and break me. I like to say he hijacked my heart at that point. <laughs> Got to my dad's house and he was already in bed. I didn't want to wake him up. So I went to his living room, 606 Franklin Avenue. Isn't it funny how we remember things? Collingwood Circle, Franklin Avenue. Don't necessarily have to have an old-fashioned altar to change your life. Because God's anywhere. So I knelt in the corner of my dad's house, his little living room. And there I cried out to him, God, please forgive me for what I've become and for forever putting anything before you. I need you so bad. I'm so sorry. And he said three simple words to me that have forever more impacted my life. Three simple words, but when they're said by the Father, they will change your life forever. He looked at me and all of my sin and all of my ugly, and he said, Anthony, I forgive you. It didn't matter what I had done. It didn't matter where I had been. He still forgave me. It didn't matter how large of sin I had in my life. He still forgave me. And then I realized that the blood had been applied upon my life. And I got up out of that corner a free man and I've never touched it since. And that's why I stand and I proclaim the name of Jesus Christ because He's a loving God. He's a loving God. I bet if we pass the microphone around that if anyone had an opportunity just to share how good God has been to you in your life and I look over and there's a lot of mature people in the audience if you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe a little white top. That have experienced life. And then there's people like me that's 40 yet I've experienced a lot of life. But I've experienced a lot of Jesus too. That He would love me in spite of myself. John, that He would see something good in us, good in us man. And forgive us. And love us. So Thursday night, I shared a little bit of my testimony and I shared some of the elements like I just did. And one of those dots in the line connecting friend would you mind coming up here real quick? There she is, yeah. 
Yeah. She's Colleen. Colleen. We just had a great time Thursday night. There was such a freedom for sharing. And Colleen said, I need to say something about your testimony. And this is what she had to say. I did not know I was coming up here. <laughs> um, what hit me so hard was that a person of authority knocked on his window with a light. And that light did not condemn him. That light shone on him in a way that was bigger than any kind of glow. It convicted him gently to go home. And when he went home, Obediently, he was welcomed with, I forgive you. And this picture was just so huge because we have people in our family that I want to come home. And I'm not alone in wanting people to come home. And so we just have to keep praying for home. And I, this is something that I don't, I didn't tell you, but Friday night, I had a dream, and I spoke here about my father, who I've been praying for since I was a little girl, and how he started going to my mom's church. And I had a dream that he called me, and he was telling me, well, this man is going to just, like, give everything to the church and just, like, slide right in. And I was, it was my dad that was telling me that on the phone, but it was also, he, w he was talking about himself, well, yesterday, my mom called me and said, I have to tell you what happened at church today. They go to Assembly Adventist Church. My dad recommitted himself in front of the whole church, which is so big for my dad. <laughs> and instead of getting baptized, he had a profession of faith. And he came home. My dad came home. <laughs> Come on, God deserves glory on that one. Thank you, Jesus. Dot connected. Brother Rich mentioned coming home a little while ago. Dot connected. Brother Lynn was up there and he said, and he spoke about Romans, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. Well, this morning, this is what God gave me. Romans, the sixth chapter. Just beyond the sixth verse, eighth verse. This pretty much sums up everything today that we're celebrating. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also share his new life. We are sure of this because Christ rose from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. And he will never die again. Mm -mm. Death no longer has any power over him. He died once to defeat sin, and now he lives for glory of God. So you should consider yourself dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Christ Jesus. If that don't excite you, I don't know what will today. <laughs> Dot connected. Today, you might be needing to come home. Today you might be lost. Today you might sit in the chair of the church every time the Sunday door is open. But you may realize that your life is not where it needs to be. Today you may have addictions that no one really knows about. God's here to set you free. Today, your relationships may be falling apart. God's here to mend. Today, you may be facing depression and anxieties. God's here to relieve and break bondages. Today, you may be stressed out. Mm. God's here to help. 
Everybody just bow your heads if you don't mind. Where's my little keyboard player if you don't mind coming up here some? Christians, just be praying that God would move in this place right now. Father God, just move in this place in a mighty way. You see, we're in God's big living room, and so there's freedom in this place for you. Though you may be broken, you may be desperate, you may need a touch of God in your life. Today, I'm going to ask you to be honest with yourself and honest with God. Where is your life? If God was to walk up in this place right now and say, kids, come on, let's go home. Ooh, what, number one, wouldn't that be exciting? Number two, would you go? Would you go? Maybe your answer is no, I don't really know, Anthony. I don't know. Maybe you need God just to move in your life. Is that you today? Is that you? How many would just slip their hand up and say, I'm broken, Anthony, and I need Jesus to change my life right now? How many would just raise their hands and say that? I need God to just change my life right now. I need God to change my life. All over this place. All over this place. God, you're moving in this place in a mighty way. How many today would just say, Anthony, I serve God all my life, but I just need a fresh, fresh touch revival in my life. I feel like I'm in a dry spiritual desert. How many would say that? Just raise your hand. Just, yep. All over this place. God, you need to send a revival today. How many would just say, I'm going through the biggest valley I've ever faced in my life and I need God to just move today? Well, He's here for you today. We have a prayer team ready to meet you. Where's my prayer team? If you'll just make your way up here. Those that raised your hand, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to step out in boldness today. And that is one of the most difficult things to do is is step out in boldness. And let me tell you one of the most precious examples of boldness I have ever met is Christy. She is bold in Christ, you all. And if I could only be half as bold as she is in telling people about Jesus Christ, that is an example of godly boldness. She's not ashamed of it. Don't ever change, Christy. Okay. But right now, if you slipped your hand up, listen, I want you to step out right now and come up front. Come on. It's okay. Yes, come on. Come up front. It's okay. Why don't you all stand to your feet so it's easier for those to get out. I just want you to step out, and these prayer partners are ready just to pray with you. Come on, step out. There you go. There is no judgment in this place. There's no one going to be pointing their finger. No one going to be saying negative things about you. Just slip out. Yes, God, move in this place right now. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in this place, God. God, we thank you for your sweet presence in this place. We thank you for what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for change. Thank you for dying on a cross for all of our ugly sin and all of our wrong things that we've ever done in our lives, God. And thank you for applying the blood upon our lives so that we could be forgiven. Lord, there's nothing like that. And God, I thank you so much for walking with us each and every day and protecting us and giving us direction in this crazy world. Lord, I love you so much. Nothing without you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus.